Welcome to Dynan and another edition of Tech Tip Tuesday. So today we're going to talk about turbocharging and low compression. Uh, a few months ago, we made an announcement they were making a low compression engine for the new uh, F10 M5 twin turbo V8. And a lot of people on the forums made comments about uh, lowering the compression as a means to improve reliability, but that wasn't really the reason we were doing it. The reason we were lowering the compression was to make more power. So let me explain to you how that works. Here we have a normal engine here with a piston and valves. And let's say the combustion chamber, the space in here, what's called clearance volume, is 50 cc's. And that's pretty normal for most streetcar engines. If you were to lower that compression by cutting a dish in the piston and adding 10 more cc's, that's a 20% increase in volume. We then raise the compression back up again by adding boost to get back to the same effective compression area. But in doing so, we've also put in 20% more air to fill in the space. And 20% more air equals 20% more power. So by lowering the compression and raising the boost to compensate for lower compression, we get a substantial power increase. Other advantages other than additional power are we can add the more ignition advance because the engine's less likely to detonate or ping. And this reduced catalyst inlet temperature because when you retard the timing, the fuel's burned in the exhaust manifold after it leaves the combustion chamber and this overheats the catalytic converter and causes the catalytic converter to fail sooner. Uh, Yet the only disadvantage to it is you get slightly worse gas mileage when you're not in boost because you now have lower compression when the turbocharger is not producing boost. So basically what we're doing is we're increasing volumetric efficiency. Uh, BMW did this in the X5 and X6M, by the way. The X5 and M6N have 9.1 to 1 compression as opposed to 10 to 1 compression for the regular X5 and X6. And what they did was they put bigger turbochargers on to raise the boost to compensate for the compression. They put bigger intercoolers on. Uh, and lowered the compression, and it wound up making 155 more horsepower than the regular X5. Lowering the compression is a very common trait in turbocharged racing engines. If you go back to Formula One, uh, back in the 80s and 90s when they were running uh, four-cylinder and V6 twin turbo engines, and run ridiculous amounts of boost, like 60 pounds of boost, uh, five bar absolute. But basically, if you make the combustion chamber on a 1500cc motor, which is what the rule was back in those days, twice as big, it makes the power of a three liter motor. You have twice the volume of the combustion chamber, twice the amount of energy being produced because you have twice as much fuel and air.